he's ready to rock that guac. I, guess I love it. I love it. All right, let's go over what you're going to need to make your own guacamole and how easy this is. All right, we're going to show you our little Montana Max flare on it as well. But here we go. Bam, we're going to pull that into focus there. We're going to make a big old batch of guacamole because I'm going to tell you, can't get enough of that guac. Oh my gosh, we were so addicted to it. I know, <laughs> avocados everywhere. Uh, yeah. In, and it, it's nice too, uh, when we went, you're going to need avocados, which the price of avocados has actually dropped significantly from where it was a couple months ago. You were paying mm -hmm. over a dollar, uh, around dollar twenty-five per avocado. That's come down quite a bit, at mm -hmm. least by half. So that's, that's absolutely fantastic. So we've got uh, some beautiful avocados. We've got a uh, lime here, some uh, red onion. I was looking at red tomato and you're a little red tomato for garnish. You can, I was going to say red onion, red tomato onion. I was putting words together. It's early. This is early for old Montana Max. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to need some cilantro, which we've got some fresh cilantro here as well that we harvested from our garden this morning uh, that we had growing. Uh, we do have a stream that we did yesterday. It shows you how we grow all of our fresh herbs and things. Besides that, we're going to need a little seasoning. You can go with the good old-fashioned salt, but why when you can do better with Montana Max's Mountain Magic all-purpose seasoning? We'll give it that little Montana kick to it, and we're going to be ready to go. That's essentially all you're going to need. There's a lot of variations out there, uh, so by all means, you know, explore your guacitude, okay? That is my word. That is, you have a lot of words that are just your words that nobody else knows. It's all right. It's all right. So awesome thing too, no heat required. Let's go ahead and get into this. We're going to uh, get a red onion here uh, and we are going to probably use about half of this, okay? So let's go ahead and slice this down and get this prepped up. We are also uh, composters. So I've got to get my lid off my little bucket there. We're turning that into beautiful topsoil for outdoor growing season. And we are going to dice this down relatively finely. Okay, red onion is always the onion that uh, is preferred if you're eating it raw. Okay, that's why when you order a cheeseburger, most oftentimes it'll be served if, with, if it's served with a raw onion with a red onion. Okay, it's kind of old school. You're like, I've had cheeseburgers where they serve me that giant slice of white onion on there. That's like an that's a kind of like an old school thing, right? It's a little bit more delicate flavor, not quite as potent and great for eating raw. Still, we want to dice this up nice and fine. So we're going to go ahead and make some nice slices. We keep the root end on, okay? That helps hold everything together here. And we want nice consistent cuts all the way across our onion, okay? So that should be pretty good. We're going to turn it 90 degrees, holding it together, and we're going to go ahead and get some nice dices here okay we can actually go over the top of this too this uh if we have some bigger chunks that we want to get worked down there this is absolutely lovely absolutely lovely so we're coming right along here off to the races right babe that's right okay. i love this method of cutting an onion it's so easy it's so simple people fight oh, with onions all the time that and, would have been me and it doesn't have time i hated cutting onions but it, this is so much easier way to do it and I'm just going to tap that down there and make sure if we've got uh, any of these big strips here, and that's they're not super big, but we can actually take our blade over the top too and just kind of give it that rough dice. Size, size is important. Shape, not so much because it's all going to go into one amalgamation of flavor here. But we don't want any big strips. We don't want uh, anybody taking one giant bite of red onion, right? The big thing when it comes to making dips or really any kind of food, we preach this all the time, right? To create that beautiful flavor experience is consistency, okay? We want every bite to be absolutely delicious. Look at how quick and easy that is. We've got a nice little pile of diced red onion ready to go, okay? Super awesome. All right, now on to avocados. And I'm going to do this today because it doesn't matter how pretty they look. Usually I have Jen do my <laughs> avocados for me because uh, yeah. she's much more delicate with them. But Max Smash, we're going Hulk here. Uh, <laughs> no, not that aggressive. Not, well, maybe not Hulk <laughs> aggressive, but we're, we are going to go ahead and smash these down. Now, a little tip that we learned in Mexico uh, from our chef down there when we took the class is uh, testing the readiness, right? They should have a little give to them starting to turn this beautiful brown color. Uh, but if you look, I'll hold that up there. 
on the top there, see the knob right there where, where it was grown? If that has turned brown, that means it's ready to go. If it's still bright green, it's not going to be ripe enough yet. So that's how they gave us as a little tip to check that out, okay? So let's go ahead and get into our avocados here. And I'm just going to take my blade. And I'm just going to roll the avocado around the blade and open that up. Look, and it, that's perfect ripeness. Do you mm -hmm. see that? Mm -hmm. It fell right out. R fell right out. <laughs> fell right out. Awesome. And you can actually uh, take the skin, and I'm going to see if I can do this here. Let's get them all cut open so we got everything ready to go, okay? Once again, looking for that little brown. We're just going to rock that blade all the way right around and then just give it a little pop, a little pop. <laughs> See, yep. And I can just pop that out with my finger right there. I'm not a fan of slamming your knife in and doing the twist thing. I think that is just a recipe for disaster. Okay. Uh, you see people do it all the time, but if you slip or something, go right into your hand with the sharp knife. I'm just not a big fan of that method. I'd rather take uh, the tip of my knife and just pop it out or cut around it. I'm not a fan of doing the big, yeah, okay? That's just that's just saying, let's hurt ourselves. Let's not hurt ourselves, right? I'm not a big fan of that technique. It's been done for years and people do it and I've done it in the past, but I've moved away from it because, you know, uh, one thing that really affects people uh, enjoyment of cooking is when they have a bad experience, right? And safety is a big thing. We want to keep make sure we're doing this safely and we don't have any accidents. There's nothing worse. It's it's like riding a horse, right? I'll give you a little Montana analogy here. Riding a horse, you get bucked off, right? The first thing in your mind isn't like, let's climb back up on that horse, you know, because you're afraid, right? And we don't want to be afraid of our kitchen tools, okay? So we want to do things uh, nice and safely and make sure that we don't have a bad experience. Now, if you do cut yourself, right, and the horse bucks you off, and this is absolutely gorgeous right there, popped right open. I'm just going to get in there and pull that out. Uh, you got to get back up on that horse, right? All right. Now, let's see if I can peel this here. And uh, the, If they're at the right ripeness, we should be able to, oh, yeah. And you can use a spoon to get under there. I'm just, I'm already got avocado fingers here. So I'm just going to roll with it here. But we can pop that pretty much right out of the skin, just like so. Okay. Just like that. Just like that. No fuss, no muss. Oh, slippery bugger. <laughs> but we're just going to peel that skin right off of there. Now, Jen has shown you when we've been doing our Taco Tuesdays and different, uh, different uh, cooking streams where we've used avocado recently, how you can slice it and how you can dice it right in and then pop it out. Mm -hmm. Right when, in the skin. Right you just in, have to not go all the way through it. So if you're interested in lear learning a little bit more about avocado, uh, and like I said, I'm doing this today, and you can see I'm already getting a little messy, which is all, all right. We're having fun. Uh, how to do it a little bit more delicately, right? Jen has some great examples of how to do that uh, on our previous streams, which you can go back and watch all of our previous streams. Look, that one, yep. beautiful. See, uh, that's like perfect ripeness. It's so hard to get an avocado that's exactly perfect ripeness. It's like they have like 24 hours or yeah. something where they're like just right. You're so, on the you clock. Close, You're on the clock. Yeah, it's crazy. The avocado clock. All right. There we go. And we're just going to move along here. I'm, I will wash my hands and cleanse them of this avocado goodness. Like I said, we're making a big old batch here, right? Big old batch because we love it. Uh, so many uses besides tacos, obviously. It's hip and with it, right? If, you, if you're part of the millennial era and you like your avocado toast, making <laughs> your fresh avocado, man. Oh, yeah. It's so good. And you can just slice them and put them on toast with a little salt and pepper. We have avocado toast a lot. We did every day when we were in Mexico. Oh, somebody else likes the avocado toast. Yes. <laughs> See, it's a thing. It's popular and delicious. All right. So that's looking pretty good here. Let me go back. You see in the corner, I'm going to just rinse my hands off real quick. And avocados, uh, 
there's a really interesting documentary actually on Netflix about the economy uh, of avocados in Mexico. And you, trust me, if, if you're bored and you're, if you like documentaries, it's a great watch. But uh, there's avocado cartels. I mean, there's like mafioso mm -hmm. levels of things going on with avocados. And it's all based around water rights, right? So in the desert, right, lack of water, avocados require a fair amount of water to grow. Uh, yes, oh, somebody's coming in hot nice. on the chef's table. How are you? Is it Irish King, perhaps? I see an I. Could be. We can't quite hear you yet. We can't hear you if you're having audio issues, but we can definitely see you there. Uh, go ahead and speak up if you get your audio working there. Oh, oh can you hear me now? Yes, we Yay! can hear you. It, it is. <laughs> Whoa. Welcome. Hold oh, on, I have to mute. Uh, sorry, I have to mute myself for a minute. The wife's talking to me here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's all right. I know how that goes. I'll be, I'll be right great. back. All right, okay. we'll be right here. Good to see you. I'm going to wave All at you. Good, good, to, good to see you, too. <laughs> that one love, international love coming in all the way from Ireland. You so got it in one. You got it in one. <laughs> be back. All right. Okay. So, awesome. Irish King joined us here from Ireland. If you've seen any of our previous shows, you know we've got friends from all over the world here, mm -hmm. Ireland included. Belgium, our good friend Quentin drops by a fair amount. So, yeah. you know, Montana from the United States, from the one state of Montana. Uh, so we really love that. All right. So we've got, let's go ahead. That that always makes me excited when we got friends dropping by the chef's table there. All right. So we've got all of our avocado in the bowl here. Let's go ahead and finish prepping up the rest of our ingredients. And then we will start combining. I'm going to go ahead and just rinse my blade real quickly here. Uh, make sure it's nice. I think Irish King uh, likes to cook as well. I think I saw in um, another chat that he was making pizza today with pineapple. Ooh. Yum. That's like my favorite. The age old debate, right? I love the pineapple on pizza. There we go. We've got beautiful fresh cilantro here. We got a big bunch. We're going to take our blade and just slide it down at a 45 degree angle to remove as much of the stem uh, matter as we can. Okay. There will still be a few in there like that guy. I'll just pull that out by hand. Let's go ahead and bundle this down as best as we can. We, let's go ahead and go side angle on this. There we go. So you can see the slicing motion here, okay? We are gonna rock our blade right through. We got a nice bundle there, tuck it in. And we keep our fingers down and let's go ahead. Slice those through. Just like so. Then we'll come back over the top. We can keep a few of those leaves for garnish at the end. There we go. Ready to go there. And also you're going to need one lime. Okay. For uh, two avocados, about half a lime. For four, we're going to go ahead and use one whole lime here. Let's go ahead now and kick that back to the overhead. And let's start bringing it together. Come together right now over guacamole. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead. I've just got a fork out. Any sort of spoon smashing device will work just fine. And we're going to start breaking these avocados down one by one. They are slippery buggers, so. Start smashing, all right? Start smashing. This is the fun part. You can get your kids involved. Yeah, if you got kids, this is great. After you cut your avocados, right? Let them just get in there and start smashing them up with a fork. You can even let wash their hands. You can even let them do it with their hands if you're just doing family, right? Just have some fun with it. We're going to get that in there. There we go. It's coming together, okay? Just like that. We want to start smashing up before we start adding everything in there because it will become more difficult the more that you add in there to actually get it mixed. So we wanna start that process at least, okay? So we got that rocking and rolling here. Now let's go ahead and start combining in some of that beautiful red onion right there, okay? Adds color, adds texture, adds flavor, okay? We're gonna just start working that around there. And when we took our little guacamole class, down in Mexico, I will tell you, we used a fork. There is no special 
avocado smashing device. I wish there was. Maybe that could be our Shark Tank invention. You want to smash avocados like a pro? <laughs> Get the Montana Max avocado smasher. All right. <laughs> and we're going to start adding in uh, some beautiful cilantro here, fresh cilantro. Smell that smell. Can you smell that smell? It's absolutely glorious okay can't really have guacamole without fresh cilantro in my opinion right and i think that's traditional they they were big on their cilantro in mexico when we were there so. everything everything yeah oh and we're combining it's looking good we just keep adding a little bit now i'm grabbing onion and cilantro all right let's get a little seasoning in there what do you say there sweetie mm -hmm. Seasoning sounds good. Seasoning sounds good. We got to get a little pop. So traditionally, they'll just use uh, salt and black pepper. Okay. Sometimes you won't see them add the black pepper, but uh, all the time, salt, 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 right? Uh, and so this is one of those things. It's kind of comes down to taste. Okay. Uh, how much, how salty you want it. You can always add it in. Darn near impossible to take it out. Okay. So let's go ahead. We are going to use our all-purpose mountain magic. Give a nice dose of that right over the top. And we continue to mix, okay? And we continue to mix. I've got a little bit more uh, red onion and cilantro here that I'm going to take and combine that in as well, okay? Might as well get all that goodness there. All that goodness. And uh, I also recall in Mexico, they use the stems too. Like they- The whole plant is edible. You yeah. can throw the stems in there as well. Yeah, they never, they don't waste anything. Okay. That's looking pretty darn good. Now, the last ingredient that we- we need to add, we have two more ingredients that we're going to use here. We've got a, a little bit of tomato up there that we're going to use. Uh, some people mix in tomato. I'm not a big fan of that. I like the more traditional vibe to it uh, because the tomatoes can oftentimes just get mashed up. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to, and there's usually salsa on the table, right? Mm -hmm. So there's not usually a need so. to, in my opinion, right? In my humble chefy opinion, there's not a need to add it in there, okay? Uh, but if you want to, by all means, okay? And also the texture, right, comes down to what you like as well. Some people like their guacamole to have a little bit more uh, chunkiness to it. I like my, I like a smooth guacamole. <laughs> you know, smooth operator. Okay, so now we've got our professional lemon lime squeezy device. All right, so we're gonna add, add in, and I'm actually that's a big old lime, so I'm actually gonna use the lemon compartment here. Now, the important thing about citrus and when a recipe calls for one lime or one lemon or half or whatever, if you're squeezing it by hand, and we're going to go back to that Hulk reference, if you're squeezing it by hand, you do not have enough hand strength to actually yield the full juice from that uh, citrus, whether it's lemon, lime, orange, whatever it is. You can't do it. You can try, but you're actually only going to get a yield of six, 40 to 60% depending on your hand strength. Maybe if you're Lou Ferrigno, you can get up to 70, 80. But this is going to allow us the leverage we need to get all of that citrus. So we're going to combine half at a time here. That's also going to help with the texture, right? It's also going to uh, make it a little bit more creamier. And the other thing that that citric acid is, is going to do is it's going to protect our guacamole uh, from turning brown, okay? If you have guacamole that you bring home from a restaurant or anything like that, guess what? The next day in the fridge, what is it, babe? Brown and ugly. Brown and, and it ugly. Can turn it, brown pretty quick too. Yeah. So can you do the next one if you're doing the other half uh, at the side angle? Sure. So you can see better. Great suggestion. There we go. We've got our guac. Look at that beautiful, vibrant green there. Awesome. It will turn in a matter of hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this lime will help prevent that. If you bring guacamole home from the Mexican restaurant and you have a little lime or lemon juice works, any sort of citric acid like that. Give it a little squeeze. It'll stay green the next day. And it's still edible when it's brown the next day. It just doesn't look very appetizing. All right, here we go. There's the squeeze. Is that still as brown as, or green as Ireland? Yeah, greener, perhaps. <laughs> greener. <laughs> you know nothing's quite as green as Ireland. I know. 
You, of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got that uh, beautiful one lime in there. If you're doing two avocados, right? Two avocados, half a lime should be sufficient. And that oh, is looking, looking absolutely fantastic. Look at that. Yeah. What's this? What's this? There's guaca everywhere. What's this? What's this? All right. So now we got one last thing. If we're going to use tomato, which we are today as a garnish, we're going to do that at the very end. Let's go back to the overhead. There we go. We've got a little tomato from our leftover recipe. Perfect to use as a garnish. Let's go ahead and cut some nice cubes there. That little imperfection will go in the compost. We don't want that. Then let's go ahead and slice these out. Nothing better than fresh guacamole. <gasps> that was on what my was... phone. That was my phone. <laughs> yeah. That was hilarious. That was a new sound we never heard. Everything stopped here. It was just like, is there a bird in the house? <laughs> I knew, I knew that. <laughs> that was funny. We've gotten used to most of the kitsch sounds and things with the the emotes and stuff, but I was like, oh my gosh, what is happening? There we go. Fresh messages off. <laughs> Hey, you're fine. You're an important man. You got phone calls coming in. You're taking care of business, right? That's right. All right, let's go ahead. I'm going to grab a paper towel here. Absolutely awesome. Let's clean up the edge of this just a little bit. We are in the presence of a king. Yes. Royal, don't, you don't tell royalty what to do. No. All right. And of course, we got our, this is going in the compost. Always make sure you get your citrus in the compost. That's a great way to keep it smelling a little bit better. Yeah. Is to add citrus in there. Did you show off our cute compost thing? I will when we come here. Let's do it real quick and then we'll pop off here. I got to take this out after the show. But look, we composted. We got a giant 45-gallon tumbler outside uh, here. And I'll show you. Let's go back above. There is all of our beautiful compost that we're turning into lovely uh, topsoil. All right. Here we go. Let's go ahead and spread that out. Nice. Creamy double. Max a lot's in trouble. All right. Ooh, yum. Yum indeed. Actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a fresh spoon. And I'm going to, before we, we garnish up, I'm going to actually just. Awesome. Te just right. Just right. Going to check our seasoning level right now because if we wanted to incorporate more salt or anything, we don't want to dress it up and then be like, oh, it's not salty enough, and then have to dump more yeah. salt and right. reconstitute, right? So let's go ahead right in the middle, pile that up just like so, creating a little elevation. You know, with it's so smooth and creamy here. I'm seeing my a little bit of my fork lines in there. I feel like I could do a guacamole Japanese like sand garden with it, and it really don't play with your food. I, that we always talk about playing with your food. Not my food. Not your food. <laughs> then we're gonna put a little bit of our fresh cilantro leaves on top as a pretty little garnish, just to give it a little bit more elevation as well. Now, imagine you're doing doing this at home, right? Imagine you're doing this at home. Look at that. That looks so pretty. Look at that. Imagine you're doing this at home and not hosting your own cooking show on Kitsch. We're at like 28 minutes there. You can easily bust this out with a couple avocados and fresh ingredients in 10 minutes flat. Start Is your it, day that, off. That, that'll take me 10, uh, 20 minutes. Will you stop? <laughs> 20 minutes. He can do it. <laughs> hey, you're under a half hour. You're doing good. Now my cutting. Look work. at that. We got a beautiful little presentation there with that cilantro on top. Come on, Jen. Come say hi. hi. I tell you, it does look lovely. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> it's simple though. Simple ways to up your flavor game, right? I'll get you a little little spoon here. Have a little taste hello, here and everybody. say hello to the king. Hi, Irish king. Hello. <laughs> okay. Mm. 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 You're right. Right on, right? It's right out of the bowl. 
Yeah. You don't even need any chips. The chips, <laughs> toast, whatever you want to put it on. Mm. Homemade guacamole, ready to go, and way better than the stuff that you buy that's sitting Yum. in the store, right? Because there's right. usually some sort of preservative or something like that to make it last a week in an airtight container. Mm -hmm. You can do better for yourself, and it's that easy to do. Right. There we go. Homemade guacamole. Yeah. Special thank you to Irish King joining us yes. here today. It's so such a lovely to time to see you. And thank you for taking part out of your day. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, and, and we've got more exciting things. We're, we've got shows coming up all day today. So make sure you check that schedule. Click that save my spot button yeah. so you don't miss a delicious moment. And we got to get ready for the next one, don't we? we? Do. So yes. without further ado, thank you everyone for taking time to join us on Homemade Guacamole. Rocking that guac on Montana Max Barbecue TV, airing on Kitch.com, the food network for a new generation. I'm Montana Max. This is Kansas City Jen. And as always, for those about to cook. We salute you. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.